This is Radiology Case Review, Renal Oncocytoma. I'm Dr. Dan Colville from Radiologist HQ. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige Ultrasound Unit. Let's take a look at the case and I'll review key teaching points throughout. So we're starting with an ultrasound of the left upper quadrant. Here's the spleen, and we see this lobular, solid, heterogeneous appearing mass in the left upper quadrant. It's rather rounded here, and we can see a faint appearance of a stellate echogenic central scar. It's also a large mass measuring at least 10 centimeters, and notice this lobulated contour here posteriorly. And there's that echogenic stellate scar that we're seeing quite nicely at the central aspect. Reviewing the sagittal image here, there's the kidney on the left, and then you can see the mass is arising from the kidney because we see a claw of renal tissue surrounding the mass. As we interrogate that more closely, you can see much more clearly this claw of renal tissue extending around the mass anteriorly and then posteriorly here as well, showing that the exophytic mass here is indeed renal in origin, as opposed to a primary retroperitoneal tumor or a splenic tumor. The sagittal cine image here nicely shows it exophytically arising from the kidney, and then also notice that echogenic stellate scar within the central aspect. When we had color Doppler, the mass is quite vascular, and you can even see there's a feeding vessel here leading to the mass. These are dual screen images showing grayscale here, and on this side we have the color Doppler, and notice how the color Doppler is arranged in a radial array, almost with a spoke wheel pattern approaching the center of the mass. And here we see quite well the spoke wheel appearance of vascularity leading to the center of the mass. Now the internal vascularity of the mass is even more evident when we use microvascular flow imaging, which is a technique that detects slow flow within small caliber vessels, so it's ideal for detecting intratumoral vascularity. And here on these images you can see that spoke wheel configuration of vascularity even more strikingly than we saw with the color Doppler images because this technique is more sensitive to detect flow. Particularly when we look at this cine clip of microvascular flow showing that spoke wheel configuration of the vessels as well as the peripheral feeding vascularity. This patient also had a contrast enhanced CT scan of the abdomen. You could see contrast within the abdominal aorta. And then there's the mass, the lobulated contour with the solid peripheral component and the central hypodense cellate scar. And again, we can see it's arising from that left kidney. Now, what phase of contrast enhancement are we in? Yes, cortical medullary. You can see the renal cortex is enhancing, but the medullary pyramids are not. And also the aorta is quite bright, so that tells you we're in the early phase post-contrast. And this phase usually occurs about 35 seconds after contrast administration. It's also the same phase as the late hepatic arterial phase, and in that phase the hepatic artery will be enhancing, and also the portal veins, but not yet the hepatic veins. That's also the phase that we see the arsiform enhancement pattern of the spleen, where it has this tiger stripey appearance due to alternating bands of red and white pulp. Now these are the coronal reformatted images from the same series, and we can see nicely the enhancing mass of the kidney with the non-enhancing central scar, and you can also identify these little feeding vessels that we saw on the ultrasound so clearly here, indicating that the mass is quite vascular. Now we're jumping ahead to the nephrographic phase, also coronal reformatted images, and this phase occurs about 90 to 100 seconds after the time of contrast administration. You can see the renal parenchyma is now diffusely enhancing. The renal pyramids have filled in, and the mass remains enhancing. We can see very clearly that claw of renal tissue surrounding the mass, confirming that we're dealing with a renal tumor and not an adrenal, splenic, or retroperitoneal mass. Now let's step back and look at the non-contrast series for this patient's multi-phase CT abdomen, and you can see the density of the mass on non-contrast images is 43. So remember that fluid or cysts tends to have a density of 20 or less. So anything above 20, you start worrying about either a hyperattenuating cyst or a renal tumor. When we give intravenous contrast here, this is the cortical medullary phase again with contrast in the aorta, mass increases to a density of 142 Hounsfeld units. That's an increase of nearly 100 and that would indicate definite enhancement. So to call true enhancement, you only need a density difference of 20 or more. So this is clearly above that. And then on the nephrographic phase, the density drops a bit to 111 Hunsfeld units, but that's still quite a bit above 43 definite enhancement. Now, what if we didn't have this non-contrast phase? What if we only had an enhanced phase and a delayed phase? Would we be able to call this a tumor? Well, doctors Makari and Bosniak did a study showing that if a mass is hyperdense on enhanced images and then drops in density or de-enhances by 15 Hansfeld units or more, assuming you're not dealing with a vascular abnormality, that tells you that you're dealing with a solid mass. Because if this was a hyperattenuating cyst, the density would tend to stay the same over this period, and usually you need at least 15 minutes. The fact that this is dropping so rapidly by much more than 15 confirms that this is a neoplasm. Now, in this case, we weren't really wondering if this was a solid mass or a hyperattenuating cyst, but that concept can help you when you're dealing with a limited uh, CT scan. 
All right, let's look at some key points for oncocytoma, and you can also find these in the episode show notes. So these are benign solid tumors. About 13% of patients will have multiple oncocytomas, and a third will have a concurrent renal cell carcinoma. So definitely look closely at both kidneys. And the central stellate non-enhancing scar that we think characteristically describes renal oncocytoma is actually only present in about a third of cases. It's usually in the larger tumors, whereas the smaller tumors tend to be more homogeneous, less than three centimeters. And notice here you can remember the number is one, three to remember these three numbers. The spoke wheel vascular pattern has been classically described as a conventional angiographic pattern, but as we saw in this case, it can also be seen with ultrasound, particularly with the use of microvascular flow or MV flow. And that can be an invaluable tool when you're evaluating for vascularity of renal masses or other tumors. But unfortunately, this tumor remains difficult to differentiate from renal cell carcinoma. Part of the issue is both oncocytoma and RCC can have a central scar or this spoke wheel vascularity. Dr. Kim did a study showing that segmental enhancement inversion, which is a phenomenon where there's a flip-flop enhancement pattern between portions of the mass between the cortical medullary phase and the early excretory phase, as a characteristic finding for oncocytoma. But unfortunately, subsequent studies have shown inconsistent results and raised some controversy as to whether this finding is truly reliable. All right, thank you for joining me, and thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.